What is going on, Benzie's Battalion? We'll see how that works. Benzie's Battalion? That sounds kind of fancy. Welcome in. Episode number seven. I have my power rankings this week. Um, we're also going to dive into Cam. We'll dive into some MLB stuff, NHL stuff. We'll just get you caught up because that's what I'm here for, to get you caught up. All right. So starting first and foremost, uh, my name is Matt Benz. I am the co-host of Twist, the weekend sports talk. You can like me and follow me on Twitter at Twist Benz for all my crazy outlandish opinions that most people don't agree with, which is perfect fine because this is my show. But make sure you check us out on twistsportstalk.com as well as go and listen to us and more shows on rtfsportsnetwork.com. All right, getting into it. First and foremost, it is Benzie's Breakdown. We are going to start with my power rankings. It will be a top 10 ranking format. So diving right in. At number 10, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, with the return of Deshaun Jackson and Elshon Jeffrey, along with tight end Zach Ertz and Dallas Scottert and the first-round receiver Jalen Rager from TCU, um, I do have faith in Carson Wentz as long as he's healthy, which is a huge question mark for a lot of people in the league, but especially Wentz. Um, he'll have a wealth of targets this season and an above-average defense since they fortified that with the ex-Lions cornerback Darius Slay. So I do have them Rounding out the top at number 10. At number nine, I have my Minnesota Vikings. Um, it's very tough to really find them. I almost had them teetering between 10 out of the top 10 and nine. My big thing is the Vikings went 10 and six last season. They made the playoffs despite an outside cornerback duo of Xavier Rhodes and Trey Waynes. Trey Waynes not being the weaker of the two, obviously, at this point in their careers. They allowed 10 touchdowns and picked off just one pass last season. They're off the roster now, and that's where my question mark lies. You've got Mike Hughes coming back, and then you've got Jeff Gladney out of TCU, who was our first-round pick. That, without OTAs, without a lot of working with the schemes and things like that in game-time situations, huge question mark to see how these Vikings push forward as a secondary. Now, they have plenty of veterans on that defensive side of the ball, plenty of studs. But can they mesh? It's going to be a tough beginning of the season, especially week one against the number eight ranked team in my power rankings, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, I do believe, though, with the Minnesota Vikings that once they figure out Delvin's contract, this is a loaded roster that will go as far as quarterback cousins can take it. That's a big thing as well. I am a Kirk guy. I believe that he can raise up to the next level. Will it happen? Who knows? Um, I just like him as a leader. I like him as what he brings to the table. I just hope he can find that extra level this season because we're going to need it. Uh, they also did extend him for two years, 66 milli um, in March. All right, going to number eight, who I was talking about that the Vikings do play in week one at number eight. I have the Green Bay Packers. The Packers went 13-3 and three and made it to the NFC Championship game in the receiving core that was, well, outside of Devontae Adams, less than complete. Running backs Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams were Aaron Rodgers' second and third most found targets, and the fourth guy was a fossil named Jimmy Graham. The front office responded to this deficit by signing Devin Funches to a one-year $2.5 million deal and selecting precisely zero wide receivers with their nine draft picks. But hey, at least they moved up and got Jordan Love. All right. At number seven, I have the team that I'm pretty high on this year. Um, also Philly, obviously, I gave them a bump because I favored them this year. I did actually uh, um, a pick them where you pick through the season matchups and I only had Philly losing a game. And I know that's that was a one time through it quick right before our twist episode. But still, I mean, the way that they walked through that schedule was pretty weird. But I also have Indy doing a lot of walking as well. Um, Frank Reich has worked with Rivers, uh, Philip Rivers before. He was a Chargers quarterback coach in 2013 and the offensive coordinator in 14 and 15. 
So as much as any coach, he should be able to keep Phillip from just throwing the rock wherever he feels, making those back foot throws, those prayers. Um, hopefully he can get um, Michael Pittman, who was their first round receiver, involved, as well as T.Y. Hilton, um, Doyle. And then you got a second round running back in Jonathan Taylor, who is a monster. Green Bay Greg, obviously from Twist. You can find his show, GBG. You can check that out on rtfsportsnetwork.com. But he's really high on his Badger running back. I think the nation's high on him. He does have the fumbling issues, but grooming that type of talent, for the most part, he is explosive. He is built almost like a Saquon. I'm not going to give him that complete comp to Saquon, but he is very similar in the way that he can find that hole and he's gone. Um, So there is certainly enough talent for Rivers to thrive with the Indianapolis Colts this season. Um, And then don't forget on the other side of the ball, you've got some monsters on defense. At number six, I gave these guys a bump as well, and I don't know why. (laughs) Let's just be honest. I got the Seattle Seahawks, and the big reason that I gave them the bump was obviously because you got Russ, okay? Russ can and has shown that he can put you on his back and make it to the playoffs. They've made it to the playoffs seven of the last eight years, And last season was supposed to be a rebuilding season, but they still went 11 and five. Uh, They did acquire (laughs) uh, former Washington cornerback Quentin Dunbar, um, one of the most underrated players at his position in the NFL for a fifth round pick in March, which he should help. That's if his legal issues don't get in the way. Yikes. At number five, I have the Dallas Cowboys. Me and Green Bay Greg, we were talking about the Cowboys yesterday, and he's very uh, opposed. He talked about it even on his show. He's not following the hype of the Cowboys. He's he's given up, you know, even a one percent chance of qualifying them as America's team. But I still have them in my top five. You know, at number five, simply because you got Zeke, you got Dak, you got Amari, you got. All right, we'll give him a half bump. Gallup. And then you acquire C.D. Lamb. Okay. Now the big question is, will the new head coach, who Greg is very familiar with, Mike McCarthy, expand from rudimentary playbook concepts that often hindered Aaron Rodgers in the past? Um, Will he be able to be creative enough to work with a Dak? Or is Dak just that simple, you know, here's this, this play, roll out, drop it, you know, easy? Or do you get over the top. We'll see with Mike McCarthy in that acquisition for the Cowboys at number five. So moving on to number four, the New Orleans Saints. Three acquisitions make the Saints stronger in this offseason. Two on the offensive side of the ball and one on the defensive side of the ball. We'll start on the offensive side of the ball. Adding Emmanuel Sanders to a two-year $16 million deal to bolster a receiving group that had been Michael Thomas and the Pips, love that line. And cornerback, they also added Janoris Jenkins and gave him a two-year deal as well. Now, the third guy I added to this is Jameis Winston. I do feel, even though he went 30 for 30 last season, Jameis is in brave in that offense over a Teddy, simply because Jameis can sling it. And if he gets groomed and if he remains teachable to a Drew Brees and really opens his ears and closes his mouth, I do believe that Jameis will be the heir apparent to a Drew Brees and can regain a career in the NFL. At number three, I have the Baltimore Ravens. The only real question that John Harbaugh's team has had at this point is Lamar Jackson's ability to work his magic in the postseason, right? The second unanimous MVP in league history crushed his opponents in the regular season, but in two playoff games, and the two playoff losses, he's completed 51.1% of his passes, thrown three touchdowns, three interceptions, taking 11 sacks, and looked overwhelmed against the defenses of the Chargers in 2018 and the Titans in 2019 when he was showing all these new schemes that they switched it up on him because they realized if we can take his feet out of the game, we take a lot of his threats out of the game, right? That being said, Baltimore is still at my number three. 
Um, you know, they have so much talent on both sides of the ball. They're so explosive. And I know I use that word a lot, but they are explosive on both sides of the ball. They are entertaining. If you're going to watch a game and you had to choose a game, you're either going to choose Patty Mahomes or you're going to choose Lamar. Like those are the offenses that you want to see. Um, so I've got Baltimore at number three. Let's do a quick recap before we get to my top two. At number 10, we had Philly. At number nine, Minnesota Vikings. Eight, Green Bay Packers. Seven, Indianapolis Colts. Six, Seattle Seahawks. Five, Dallas Cowboys. Four, New Orleans Saints. Three, Baltimore Ravens. And now to my top two. So a lot of people that I saw in their power rankings did have Baltimore at two. Um, I, however... I'm not going to give them that bump because one thing that I really want to focus on with Baltimore, and it is with a lot of NFL teams, I get that, but he has a higher risk with Lamar because he's rolling out and using his feet so much, the risk of injury. Okay. So if Lamar gets injured, what is that team then? That's the way I have to picture it in my mind. So that's why I dropped them to three. And at number two, I have San Francisco 49ers. All right. Now, I'm not a fan of Jimmy G, and I feel like he has to kind of do a Kirk Cousins format where he has to rise to the next level. Simple as that. Uh, the 49ers recently tore up Kyle Shanahan's old six-year contract and gave him a new six-year contract that keeps him with the team through 2025 and makes him one of the five highest paid coaches in the NFL. Not too shabby for a guy that can't finish. It's as simple as that. Um, but he is an offensive juggernaut a genius in those aspects to have a three-headed bell cow of all those backs last year where you could literally put anybody in that backfield and they'd go off for two and a hundred two touchdowns and a hundred yards like that's amazing you get a guy named moster who and then you got fantasy guys saying calling him must start because he needs to be started each week because he's putting up those numbers he'll be a guy to really watch this year um to see what happens with him I'm iffy on him, but he, how can't you be? The guy came out of nowhere. And then at number one, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. If you thought the Chiefs were content with their first Super Bowl win in 50 years, think again. An offense that was already near unstoppable when Patty Mahomes is healthy and has been rendered that much closer to perfect with the addition of a first-round running back, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Yeah out of LSU, who fits perfectly with Andy Reid's potential paradigm and gives Mahomes the outlet target he didn't always have in 2019. Um, so that in of itself, just Patty Mahomes, man. How much can you say about him? Tyree Kill, the Lizard King, Sammy Watkins, Travis Kelsey. I mean, it's just un unimaginable. Like, you have all of that. Then you got the Honey Badger on defense. You've got – all this, I mean, just a young core of talent that should be a legacy. They're their own worst enemy in this, right? That and health, which is any NFL team. So once again, at my top five, we'll recap that. I had Dallas Cowboys, New Orleans Saints, Baltimore Ravens, San Francisco 49ers, Kansas City Chiefs. And that is Benzie's Power Rankings. Once again, you can find me on Twitter at TwistBenz. Don't forget to like us on Facebook at RTF Sports Network and also Twist Sports Talk on all social media platforms. You can also check out our main show, Twist, the Week in Sports Talk, at twistsportstalk.com. Beautiful. All right, going on from the breakdown, let's go into the baller of the week. So my baller of the week is going to be a guy with a just a golden last name, Torkelson. Yikes. Spencer Torkelson is my baller of the week. He was the first overall pick in the MLB draft, and the Detroit Tigers have agreed to terms with him. Uh, the signing bonus included with the deal is a record $8,416,300. The figure eclipsed the record set last year by the Orioles at $8.1 million. Now, here's some stats on Torkelson in his college last season. He walked in 31 of his 82 plate appearances, obviously because he hits dingers 
Um, but he still managed to improve his career home run count to 54 in 498 at bats. Dude will be exciting to see. It's a bummer um, from an aspect of competition that he's in the AL Central, but it's also going to be fun to see him and see how he is groomed. Obviously, I don't expect to see him off the bat because that's just how baseball goes, but you never know without the minor league this year, which we'll get to. Um, let's go on to from baller to bonehead. Benzie's bonehead of the week this week is going to be two separate entities. It's NBA 2K and Mad 2021. Um, EA releases the cover athlete and reveals trailers for Madden NFL 21, resulting in player out outrage over the apparent lack of changes to the yearly series. So when I play Madden, when I play NBA 2K, which isn't as much anymore, you can see from year to year, there's no changes. I talked to Mike Reeves, who is Mike on the mic, who's co or we'll call it host Mike, twist host Mike. You can like him on Facebook, but I talked to him all the time about it. And really what you're paying for is $60 to get a roster upgrade. You know, and not only that, but you see the story modes and things like that. You binge through those in a day. You binge through those in three hours and you're done. And then it's all, and don't get me wrong, I love them. I love the roster updates, but for that price with really no new updates, then you look at 2K. I saw a guy on Twitter that was like, well, it's good. 2K21, just higher definition sweat. 60 bucks for higher definition sweat and the roster update. So I would really like for them to really tweak Madden, tweak NBA 2K, and give the people what they want because those games, they ain't cheap. All right, so from bonehead to buzz, mine's well. So in the Benzies buzz this week, we'll start in the NBA. Um, NBA Adam Silver states they are on track, but spread of corona may stop the NBA. You can see what's going on. The second wave, which I, I firmly believe it is a second wave, but it's Corona. You know, it, it's not going away. We don't have a cure. We don't have a, a way to make it stop. People are going to get it. And if you look at the statistics and it does, it does suck that people are dying, right? You've lost half, half million people in the world to this plague, uh, this virus, right? but we still have to continue to keep moving. Um, we, we can't continue to be crippled by a virus. Um, whether that requires those at most risk to stay in and those at most risk to, you know, social distance and follow higher, stricter protocols, do so. Um, but, and that's selfish. I understand that's selfish of me. I want sports. I, I need the breakup in the monotony. It doesn't help doing a sports podcast when all you're talking about really week to week is when they're going to start now, if they're going to start now, um, just roll through. I mean, you can see sporting um, leagues, UFC, NASCAR, PGA, who are just rolling with it. You have guys that are, you know, testing positive. It's not shutting the league down. It's not making the world stop because the world does not stop because of the coronavirus. It keeps spinning. Believe that um, on to the NHL. The NHL won't defer on $300 million bonuses that are to be go out today. Um, so congratulations to those players. NHL players who are due signing bonuses today are expected to be paid as scheduled. Maple Leafs forward Austin Matthews will receive a nice direct deposit, most likely, of $15.2 million. I'm hoping that's gross, and I hope that gets taxed. <laughs> um, and then you've got Mitch Marner, who is um, also going to receive $14.3 million. And don't forget about Connor McDavid with $13 million today. It's a great July for those gentlemen. And then staying in the NHL, 15 positive tests out of 250 corona tests. That is about a 6% positive rate, which is a very low number, but it will be blown out of proportion. On to the NFL. Cam to the Patriots. Former NFL MVP Cam Newton has reached an agreement on a one-year incentive-laden deal with the New England Patriots. And a lot of people are upset because Cam didn't get a big bag. Well, get excited. Cam barely made a team this season and would have probably had to wait till a QB got hurt because he was holding out and not a lot of people showed interest. And the New England Patriots don't pay quarterbacks. Ask Tom Brady. Right? Right. 
Okay, so Newton will now step into the mix to try to help replace Tom Brady, who left the Tam- for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in free agency. And he will compete against Jared Stidham and the 11-year vet, the wily veteran, Brian Hoyer. Yikes. Um, so I don't call that a competition unless Jared Stidham plays balls out and just <laughs> – just crushes the competition, which I don't see. So I expect Cam to go week one. That's that. Congratulations, Cam, on finding a, a, a team that you can hopefully, you know, pull a Jameis and really uh, groom yourself back in and try to stay as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Good for you. MLB, they can't name positive testers because of a HIPAA law. So this is what Blake Cashman had, or Brian Cashman, had stated to the media I've been is that the media will be left to try to figure that out. Somebody might be down and out, but we might not be able to speak why. And it would be a speculating circumstance where the media finds their journalistic superpowers to determine if there's anything there or not due to HIPAA. That's very interesting because I want to know, even with HIPAA, how we're finding out about all these other people. Is it just simply leaks? If that's so, yikes. And a sad day, minor league baseball has been canceled. Um, That happened yesterday, and the head of their governing body said more than half of the 160 teams are in danger of failing without government assistance. We are a fans in the stands business. There was a conversation at one point, well, can we play without fans? And that was one of the shortest conversations in the last six months. It just doesn't make any sense. Sad day. I'm really interested to see if MLB is going to now expand your roster because you do pull so many guys up from the minors, especially relief pitchers, starting pitchers throughout. I know it's only a 60 game season, but still you're going to have injuries and such. How do you keep these guys game ready? Um, So we'll see how that goes. And then Shoni Otani set to resume his two-way play this season. He wasn't expected to start pitching at the beginning of the season, but due to corona, he is expected to be on the mound and also DH on the games that he is not pitching. Excellent. So that's that in those aspects. Um, Last but not least, we're going to go to Benzie's Bite. I'm going to give a quick food review on where I – Eight last week. It's called Coalition. It's in Excelsior, Minnesota. Super swaggy hipster spot. I think they had like six tables in the whole place. I'm giving you two stars. The food was amazing, but the service blew. Um, we ordered an appetizer and tried to. Then the guy tried to upsell us on cauliflower. Get the fuck out of here. Ain't nobody want your cauliflower. I want an appetizer and I want my steak, bro. Um, so coalition two stars in Excelsior, Minnesota. That's the lowest on Benzie's bite yet. Look out because Benzie's coming to take a bite out of you. Once again, I want to remind everybody that you can like me on Twitter at twist Benz. Go listen to us on RTF sports network. Check us out on twistsportstalk.com. And last but not least, stay blessed. Have a great week. <laughs>